All right, we already have our players ready to go. They are waiting uh, for the round to start here. Um, and I'm, I'm excited. So we have um, our new teammate um, for the Constructive Criticism uh, Utah team, Will. Uh, William, I actually don't know if he goes by Will or William. We didn't ask him. Uh, playing against Aaron. And we have blue-white control versus uh, four-color elementals. Four-color, yeah. Will Williams, or Will, is on four-color elementals. Um, let's see if there's anything here that's you know, gives it the... So you fix that for the camera. Elementals... And looks like we have started here with Aaron winning the die roll, leading on a uh, a scalding turn. Right. Oh, William's okay. just gonna play land and pass. I like his sleeves. Let's see what William's gonna fetch up here. Looks like both players opting for a. Raugren Triome, the Jeff Sky one. Interesting to note about this blue eye control deck, it does look like it is a 60 card blue eye list. Okay, yep, so no no Yorians and only it's like two chalice. Yep, uh, three verdict, one to fairy, uh, five, three to fairy, three, um, one JTMS as kind of like. Looks like I think those are all the planeswalkers that I saw. Uh, Wandering Emperor. Is there a Wandering Emperor down there? Yeah. Oh, look, th just a ton of planeswalkers from this list. Okay. All right, we have Land Crack here from William. There's a Misty. Rainforest. Oh, yep. So taking a look at uh, Aaron's hand, I see a couple to fairies, um, Archmage's charm, a couple lands. I actually really like Aaron's list. Yeah, it's pretty clean. Two dress downs, a little red splash for fire ice. Mm -hmm. um, he has uh, four spreading seas out of the board to try and mess with people's mana. Uh, prismatic endings, shark typhoons. Uh, as well as two Chalice of the Void main, mm -hmm. um, which is able to also take advantage of that red splash. It's kind of similar to the deck that we saw at the uh, top eight, our RCQ, um, that was piloted by um, our our friend uh, Skyler, yeah. that was playing Fire Ice and Chalice of the Void mm -hmm. and Prismatic Ending with the Light Splash. Yeah. All right, so here's a Teferi 3. I don't recommend bouncing those with Nissa for your uh, opponent. Yeah, I actually would not be surprised to see a blank bounce here, though. Looks like he is going up. Then it looks like that's in a... Is that a Brazen Borrower? There is a Brazen Borrower in the list, yes. I think we're going to see a Risen Reef or another a Teferi of... Uh, oh, interesting. Was that draw draw Yorian? Put Yorian into the hand. Discard. Discard. Okay. So I think I see. Yeah, I think I see an adventure card in Aaron's hand. Going up again. So I think that's the only like card that could have that adventure text, right? Is the the brazen power. But I don't recognize that art. All right, so the next thing we see here, I, Misty Rainforest for William. And a pass. William 
has already won. We're in back-to-back -back RCQ winner territory on camera here. William also already winning an RCQ. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay, up to seven on Teferi. I think I almost figured by now with the second one in hand, we might have seen a, a blind bounce to draw a card. But I, I think Aaron must be feeling pretty comfortable with, with two Archmage's Charms and it's Teferi in play. really hard to get past this Teferi plus a bunch of counter spells at this point for okay. William. Although, uh, William's deck probably does play four... Uh, Cavern of Souls? Uh, two Cavern of Souls. Two Cavern of Souls, okay. Yeah, so not, not, not as much, uh, uncounterability. This list here. It actually looks like, uh, the part of that reason, though, is for Traverse the Uvenwald able to get lands once Delirium is in play. Yep. Uh, I do see there is an Emrakul the Promised End in the deck with, well. with the Traverse package, uh huh. As well as two other Marnie's calls, so lots of ways to get Emrakul, lots of ways to get your your creatures. Mm -hmm. uh, Fury is going to come down hard cast off of a Cavern of Souls, bring down that Teferi quite a bit. Now that Teferi, uh, not looking as you know as schmexy as uh, it could, had uh, Cavern not come down. Right, yeah, that was that was a really good draw for 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 William, um, being able to find that cavern against, um, you know, a bunch of counter spells. All right, going to attack here. Ooh, let's see, Shark Typhoon. Shark Typhoon's going to three do it for three. Um, not sure that's going to matter too much as the Fury has double strike. Oh, sure. And it's three three. I believe it is a three three. Yes. <laughs> I like that shark token. Sure. So the shark token will die. Oh, Aaron, maybe not seeing the double strike on uh, on Fury. I think he thought he was going to trade with that card. Yep. Yeah, so it's going to deal first strike damage. Players discussing this. Yeah. Might be a judge call. I don't know. Since since we're right next to the the station. Hmm. Looks like they are in the middle of a judge call. Yeah. So let's... And yes, we are in round two. We're going to cut back to us while the players discuss that with the judge. Um, yeah, I mean, it looked like a pretty clear shark typhoon block. Um, so that the shark is uh, going to uh, into the graveyard. Um, or it vanish, does... vanish into non-existence. Yes. After, after briefly touching the graveyard. We are still, for what it's worth, uh, at uh, at our at um, William's turn too. So mm -hmm. William will be able to cast some more spells as well. So definitely. Um, actually, pause this and uh, be right back. Okay. Okay, so I do know what was happening there, um, and I helped them resolve it. Uh, the player was actually asking how double strike worked. He didn't realize that double strike was first strike damage, then regular damage. Mm -hmm. And so that was what the confusion was. Okay. So we did get the shark token in the yard. Yorin's going to come down, going to blink that, kill the fairy, as well as draw off of Oath. I think I found another fury, too, um, for William. Pretty good sequence there for um, 
for William. Obviously a little unfortunate for Aaron, uh, not understanding how that interaction worked, but you know, that's part of these type of events, right? You learn. All right, here we see, uh, I believe that's prismatic end, yes. getting, ending that uh, that oath, stopping it from coming back again and again. Okay, yep. Fetching with a windswept heath here. Yeah, and if, if, if that interaction of an understand, maybe, you know, maybe you don't go the full three. Maybe if you're trying to save your Teferi, you go for one and leave up uh, right. some form of interaction, like a just counterspell or something. Okay. I do see a fire ice there for uh, Aaron as well. Yeah, Aaron's on quite the clock, though. He actually kind of needs to draw Supreme Verdict at this point, especially when you consider that the counter spells are turned off by that Cavern of Souls. Right. Uh, two, two turn clock on board here with the six from Fury, four from Yorian. All right, we're going to go ahead and bounce the Yorian. Okay. Taking a little less damage, stemming the bleeding a little bit. Going down to 12, I believe. Right, I think, and then possibly just because Gorian's not an elemental. Right, able to counter it's that able, one, whereas... able to counter it. Exactly. Yeah. Good, nice heads-up thought there by Aaron. Yeah. Ooh, Traverse. No Delirium. Looks like it's just land... And Aaron's going to fetch down to 11 as well. Seeing a basic snow island for William. There's an unholy heat in hand. I don't know. It almost looked like a colorless card. It might Looks like we're going to draw two cards here from uh, Aaron. Okay. Really looking for a way to get rid of this five mana death elemental staring him down. Right. Wandering Emperor is another card that can do get him out of this situation pretty easily. Um, but he actually so wished that that was an untapped land to make that one happen. Right, and it looks like we see Jace drawn. Um, JTMS. You know, he may be better than all, but he's not exactly what we're looking for right now. Do you think we see a Brainstorm or a Minus? Oh, Fate Seal. Ooh, Fate Seal you. That Going is up. interesting. You think this is maybe like, ah, look, a distraction. I've, I've done a few of the, there's been a few planeswalkers that have ah, cast look, that are, a uh, distraction has been called <laughs> right attack attack my planeswalker don't attack me there we go tap okay Jace is going to take one there. Jace is going to take It one. was, in fact, a distraction. <laughs> yes. It was distracting. Uh, okay, I, abundant growth. Now that thing can tap for any color of mana for anything. Play a fetch land. Naming yeah. elemental. Now he has to specify, right? Am I using my colored mana for um, cavern's ability? Colored mana from abundant growth. We're going to go ahead. Ah, it was not a distraction. It was just dying to that fury we knew about. Oh, righteous. Yes. Kind of in the same spot. Really, actually, just definitely need to draw uh, verdict, here. verdict here. So we do actually have the mana to draw to with the other Archmage's Charm mm -hmm. to get there. It makes it makes me wish that Aaron had maybe considered the Brainstorm line last turn, or if you right. were going to Fate Seal, maybe actually Fate Seal yourself. Right, to try and, and go a little deeper in your yeah. deck to find Verdict. That is one. That is another great thing, right, to speak to the power of Archmage's Charm. His, his Counterspell side may be dead, right, with, uh, with the Cavern of Souls in play, but it's still... Is a two for one can draw you yeah. two cards. 
Um, Rage's Charm is actually just one of my favorite magic cards. And I think, that, is that a memory deluge? It is. So he, uh, Aaron has a memory deluge in hand, uh, which maybe he's hoping to find an emperor off of... Uh, so we have five, six... Oh, animate hive. Or, not hive, but hull of the storm giants. 7-7 seven, seven does block a 6-6. Six, six, or a 3-3 three, three double strike. Barring any other interaction. One of the nice things about the version of the deck that... Uh... Oh, nice. Going to pay the, the cost to get this and then attack your life total down to the the littlest amount possible, which is less than... Oh, no, because it's going to gain 7. So he's going to take 13, going down to 5. Yep, that's what that looks like there. Yeah, going to 5. What I was going to say is... Um... I actually don't remember. I don't remember, Patty B. Uh, you were talking about uh, Oh, list. that's right. The, the Elementals list has the ability to win a lot faster because it has those combo-esque turns that the, you know, the the Blink, the four-color Ewit deck does not have the ability to do. Mm -hmm. So you end up with a lot less of those games, like anemic games where you've really won the game, but it still takes like 15 minutes for that game to end. Right. Because of Risen Reef, players are just going to concede pretty quickly when you start popping off with Elementals. Right, definitely. That uh, that makes lots of sense, and and the, with the traverse package too, being able to find Ember Cool on a fairly consistent basis yeah. is another way to just quickly end the game. And and chat chat's saying it here too. You know, there's a reason that Blue White has just almost completely evaporated from the meta game, and it is because of this deck. Right. Um, I do know that uh, there was kind of a different version of Blue White played in the challenge this last week mm -hmm. by Gabe Nassif. with the uh, days and doing. The days, yeah, the days I'm doing deck. Yeah. Um, really interesting take on the deck. Uh, not exactly what we're seeing here from Aaron, but you know, looking at Aaron's sideboard, you know, we have subtleties, spreading seas, rest in peace, uh, tons of cards that might be able to uh, make an impact. I personally, um, not as fan of bringing in uh, spreading seas in most of the time against this deck. I might like it against Cavern though. Right, yeah, because um, yeah, you're not, not really. It's really hard to um, you know try and take uh, the four color player off of a color with spreading right. seas. Um, but yeah, I could definitely see with, since since cavern is just so good against against you um, with maybe the splash of, of maybe yep. taking them off a color, or bringing that. I in. also think that subtlety is totally reasonable in this. What is uh. Mm -hmm. What does it look like going from William's side? Sure, yeah, so from William we got a couple Chalice of his own, two Veil of Summer, I like those here, two Supreme Burn, Verdict, an Endurance, Beseju, uh, Meddling Mage, two Flusterstorm, a Mags of the Moon, a Knight of Autumn, and an Ashiok Dream Render. Okay. So, a few extra threats. Um, I Probably the, the counter spells here, right, the Flusterstorm... Maybe meddling raid mage is another threat, or you know, can maybe turn off uh, supreme verdict. Veil of Summer is such a like beating. And veil, yeah. Uh, see, I expect veil of summer. Um, I don't think that we saw anything that I would want night of autumn for flusterstorm and meddling mage. Mage makes some amount of sense. Yeah. So. It all kind of depends on right what he also wants to board out. Uh, I see maybe. Well, does unholy he hits creatures and planeswalkers, correct? It does, yes. So, does actually probably staying in. Yep. Uh, it looks like, uh, for what down. it's worth, there are no lightning bolts in uh, William seventy five. Yeah. Just the three unholy heats, as well as the traverse package and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe those endings aren't as aren't as great against blue white. Yeah, I also think the dress down is definitely coming out. I don't yeah. think it's very good in this matchup. But players look like they are shuffling up, so we will head on back over to them. Yeah, 
well, a great young Utah Magic player. Just actually has improved consistently for as long as he's been playing the game, as far as I've seen. Yeah, to to quote you, I think you you've called him the next Michael Hendera. <laughs> I did say that. Yeah. Don't say my private conversations <laughs> live on air. He's great. We love we love <laughs> Will. Uh, yeah, I think I think he's no. It's okay. Uh, I think I think Will is actually complete gas. Yeah. So uh, I remember the we were playing at a PTQ uh, right before the pandemic, mm-hmm. um, and he beat me, and I thought he was going to jump out of his chair. Like, so excited to be yep. me. Um, and I just, ever since then, have uh, just been impre- watched him and been impressed. Yeah, good good dude. So Aaron's taking a mulligan, it appears. Will's happy with his hand. The boomers are in the chat saying not too bad for, I assume that's for a zoomer. For a zoomer? I mean, he well is a total zoomer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, there 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 are some some great ones. Yeah. Uh, the the diamonds in the rough, as it were. Okay. Is that a dress down? What is that? Uh. W- d- yes. Oh, actually, that makes sense from that side. I don't know what I am, why I'm confused. Oh, because it's 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 the blue eye player. Blue-eyed player, yeah. But hold on. There's the oh, so the, there's two in the main. Okay, I was like, I didn't see that before, but that that, that is there. We need a we need a word for magic players like me because I I don't think that I'm a magic boomer, <laughs> but like we definitely are though. I mean, compared to what? Maybe like pre arena. Oh, I don't like that. You don't like that? Is that too? No, like, I don't mind. Including too many people. Half of the zoomers that do half the players that do well on empty Joe are zoomers. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe pre war the spark like fire design. <laughs> All right, here we go. Untapped here from Will. And enough boomer zoomer talk. We've got chats popping off, just debating yeah. the the validity of what a boomer and a zoomer yeah, is in exactly. magic. <laughs> Whoa, distraction. Um, yeah. So dress down. I saw Dovin's veto um, for Aaron. We have a forest here, which means that we actually could see Ren co- try, attempt to come down here. And I do see. I think he has a archives uh, counter spell as well. So counter spells up. Which I think probably just use the veto, right? Oh no, uh, counter spell being cast here. It's it's, it's interesting how much um, maybe interaction you're expecting from uh, William's side, right? As far as making that decision on like, since you know, with Brandon Six being a non-creature spell, right? Using that veto, yeah, I, for I, that. I was going to look. I don't know that I'm bringing in Vito in this matchup, so I'll be interested if, if anyone wins the match to maybe ask him about that. Mm-hmm. So we did see a shock there uh, to un- unlock Archmage's Charm from Aaron. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is the other card in hand now. Yep. We also see Fetch Shock from William. Three mana. It's going to be Teferi 3. I assume that we're not letting that one resolve. I mean, I wouldn't. So here's the veto. Oh, man. I miss those old gold borders. Maybe I am a booner, boomer. Yeah, right? <laughs> if you enjoy the time spiral... You gotta you get those mono, mono brown artifacts, man. Yep. Classics. To be fair, I, I think... I think that a lot of players, you know, their initial start to magic is typically a lot more casual, right? Mm-hmm. Those those cards were certainly old by the time I started playing competitively. Right. But you still have a connection of those were the old cards when you were... The tapping of the land there was an interesting line uh, from... Oh, it's because we were looking for a land. Mm. Okay. Yep, got to... As a blue-white player, you have to keep hitting your land drops. Um, I think that's true in any any format that you play blue white control in. Yep. 
We still are unlocked on the Archmage's Charm. Once again, you know, it's really going to come down to whether or not... Oh, that is a nice way to... Oh, we're going to let that resolve. Okay. Oh, the Dominator's call. What's the call? <laughs> what is the call? I don't know the context of Will's hand, but... Right. Uh, it's probably... I mean, it, it, yeah, it's risen reef. Oh, sure. Just, just value. The ledge. What's the ledge? And, I don't know. I don't know. You guys, uh, and the, yes, the, the, the legend. Oh, the legend. Okay. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Abbreviations. I don't know the slang. All right, we got a land there from William. We see uh, abundant growth on the Basaju. Going to draw a card. I don't, know I, I don't know if I like that line. If you because the thing is is that if you play on a different land and then you draw the cavern, you would then have been able to cavern. Okay. And then Aaron does decide to counter with Archimedes Charm, the Risen Reef. Another... Look, that was either a gold card or a land on the from the draw there. Okay, looking at, looking at Aaron's head now, we see a Subtlety, the Dress Down, and two Verdicts. So... Verdict can be important unless we start popping off with some Risen Reefs. Uh, we have Instant Sorcery land creature instant creature planeswalker land so we do have delirium here okay is it is it ever cool time to at least grab that into your hand i don't know it could also be time to do your move now get sex you don't have to do the whole song that's right i just had to you gotta calm yourself down yeah Get your game on, man. Spencer, you got me excited. Get your game on. You started singing. Get your game on. <laughs> chat says, that too, chat says person. please continue. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. All right, here we have uh, the one, the only, the om the omnith omnipotent, <laughs> the <laughs> omnipotent. <laughs> That's way too early for us to start with the the bad jokes, but I mean. I'm my father. I can make a dad joke whenever <laughs> right. I want. I said bad jokes, but dad jokes is <laughs> they're they're in the same family. All right, we do have a resolution there on the Omnath. Kai. Um It looks like we're have a decision here from Aaron on if Aaron wants to verdict here. All right. And Maybe it's actually kind of a hard decision. Aaron yeah. missing these land drops has been it might need to be like to fairy bounce the Omnath just to to draw a card and get that. Yeah, this is rough. This untap is going to unlock quite a bit of mana for William here. Right. Cause, oh, because he does have a fetch in play. Oh, to fairy of his own. To fairy three. Oh, that's huge. Probably going to be able to if uh, wanted actually bounce the abundant growth, which will happen. These four color decks have just so much value. Uh, we have Fetchland going up there to back to 20 for William. Crack going down to 19. Looks like Aaron debating if the response is warranted. Looks like going to crack again. Fetch response, fetch. Crack, crack, crack. Don't worry, it's just chat talking about my jokes being bad. Yeah. No, I was I, I was looking to see I I saw the the follows, but that there was there wasn't a new follow. So just the the hearts attracted to, distracted. The dis don't be distracted by the chat man. Be distracted by the fact that this Omnap this, Omnath this is Omnath. popping off. It is popping off. Oh, so four mana plus the four damage trigger. Are we just going to cast Emrakul right now? 
Is there an enchantment in the... Oh. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Nine, ten. Oh, yeah. there it is. The promised end. Uh, that doesn't work there, buddy. Yep. Cannot cast... Uh, no, you, that's not how that works. You just can't cast the spell. Yeah. It doesn't go in the graveyard. Right. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get that, that fixed. Yep. Uh, we're going to go and let them know. Yeah. All right, so William will take the turn here, playing uh, Teferi. Teferi will bounce the Emrakul. Archmage's Charm. Yeah, Patty B is correcting them here. So this does unlock uh, just literally pitching. But it actually looks like not electing to pitch the the pitch elemental there. All right, got that fixed. All right, plus here from that. Well, go ahead and get rid of the Teferi. Back up Teferi and two verdicts. All right, we're gonna go ahead. I assume I'm gonna attack that Teferi down. Yeah. Fairy will enter the bin, so to speak. Is Emrakul back in uh, William's hand? All right, we, are we doing this again? Yeah, I, I, I agree that we should have had the players rewind and call the judge. Yeah, um, that is, that is a mistake. I think, for what it's worth, that Will was maybe being nice there. I didn't know if that was uh, so. There's there's a trigger, right? So he still will take. He'll still take the extra turn. That's the, correct. The turn. Oh. Well. Now, uh, Will has the ability to minus the Teferi, bounce the the, the, Omnath. the Omnath, and then kill the Teferi with the Fire Ice, if wanted. No, nope, failed to find on the fetch land. Failed to. F oh, are we gonna not fail to find? I think he's gonna look. Oh sure. Look, look, and and fail to find. I I don't know what it is. I c I couldn't find any lands in there, man. <laughs> Uh, fire is going to, I believe. Okay. Does fire only target creatures? Hmm. I don't know. Fire maybe two to any target. It's just like chalk. All right. Untap here for Aaron. We did get a land there. Okay. It's going to shock ourselves, go down to 10. That's an interesting shock. I'm not sure. At this point, you've just kind of got a pot. You know that their Emrakul is going to be drawn, right? So. All right. Living on a prayer. Halfway there. An 
Ottawara. That's the draw. Ottawara does bounce Emrakul. Yeah. Although I don't actually think Emrakul will be able to be cast this turn. Oh wait, maybe it can. <laughs> All right, I'll do it again. It's tricky because you don't really with with Emrakul and Pit play. You're not really wanting to cast the verdicts. Maybe like uh, you channel the Ottawara to bounce your. Well, maybe bounce your Emrakul. I, I would bounce the Emrakul. Just use that to that or these verdicts are a bit annoying, troublesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Really slowing down the game there with those verdicts, Aaron. You know, as Teferi says, let's slow things down. On Arena? Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So we're going to go ahead and p use the Ottawara to bounce. Oh! The Abundant Growth. Okay. Okay. Pass the turn. I fully expect, since there's a lethal Emrakul in play, that we'll see Supreme Verdict this turn. That's that would That's a good guess. Funnily enough, though, we could plus the fairy and not see it this turn. Sure. Looks like that's going. Oh, no, but we are going to see Verdict put that Emrakul into the yard. And a memory deluge drawn. Maybe William's just thinking, right? Like, I, there's two of these Verdicts. I have to work through them. Yeah. This Emrakul is going to get answered by one of these Supreme Verdicts. Why delay? Like get get some value, draw a card off the abundant growth again. Yep. So I do like that. One, two, three, four. Omnath that he bounced to his hand earlier. Omnath will enter the battlefield, draw a card. Looked like a. Yep. So he did keep in some amount of endings. I guess that it can also hit those planeswalkers. No land here, it looks like, from William. Mm. Another verdict, okay. All right, now the ways are mostly clear for William if he decides to start, like, Risen Reefing or stuff like that. Sure. Yeah, now he can really, that those verdicts are gone, can start expanding the board. Ooh, both of this is a good start. For that. Yeah, another on that. Alright, we're gonna have three mana here, which means leads me to believe that a risen reef is coming down. There we go. Turn One that. of the oh, there we go. Trigger, 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 trigger. Sure. No land, though, it looks like from William. That's pretty wild. I think he, he's drawn you know, three cards that turn with two Reef Triggers and the Omnath Trigger. Scalding Tarn was found for Aaron. What is that? That allows so we have Deluge, to cast spells, yeah. Is it Deluge, Charm, and Snap? Uh, just Daily's Charm. Oh, okay. All right, here's Ren. Ren's going to go back, probably get a fetch land here. Yep, I would assume so. That's good that that resolved. Game life go back to 21, I believe. Uh -huh. Swinging in for five. All right. There's a memory deluge. Response. 
good discipline there from William by attacking before getting the mana so that you could second force some kind of interaction from Aaron before mm -hmm. using the mana. Right. Which didn't look like interaction for the board. It was a counterspell and... Is that a spreading seize? All right, fetch land card? here going down to 20 for William. Planes trigger. All right. Counterspell. Then green. Oh, oh, that's sweet. All right. Well, I assume that this is going to be another risen reef. At least that's what it would be for me. Right, you can't can't deny the value. Too much value with double reef. I mean, he's he's going for. Oh, you know what though? That actually gets rid of the memory deluge. I actually like that play better. Oh, to grab an endurance. Sure. There's he is shuffling in two verdicts into the deck, but. They go Draw on the card. bottom? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That makes more sense. Not that it matters, because right. fetch land's about to happen anyway. Now we're re-randomizing. Oh, baby. Alright, Ephemerate's gonna... Oh my gosh! Will is struggling on the struggle bus to find these lands. Probably has like a billion cards in hand too. I think I think he has seven. So like a billion. It's uh, roughly a billion, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, so we did seas. we did get the spreading seas. Send the land island. So, permission for Aaron, but nothing that interacts with the board. Well, we're about to start to have Yorion turns happening, so... Alright, go ahead and attack for seven here, which is a lethal attack. Draw two cards. And that is going to do it. Will yeah. will take the match 2-0, and we will be back with our one hour William Jackson soon. I will go grab him. All right. Take three. Okay. I apologize. Uh, yeah, so... I wanted to talk to you about the blue white matchup. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, this is a deck that four color really preys upon it. It has almost removed blue white from the meta game, and I was kind of curious your thoughts on the both this match and the matchup. Yeah, so I like playing blue white, so I, I think it's too bad that it's kind of yeah, it's basically knocked out by this. Um, I played in RCQ, and I was playing blue white, and I played against four color, and the matchup just kind of felt hopeless. It felt like. Um, so, yeah, like that second game that I had, I had um, turn two uh, Ren and Six, which he had to have the counterspell for, and then turn three to Fairy, which he had the counterspell for. And then even past that, sometimes the matchups will go, like, then you'll have Omnath after that, and they just have to answer everything. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. Um, you, had, you had a moment in the match where you had an Emmer cool, but Subtlety was in the yard for some reason. Did you have, when, the subtle, when we put the Subtlety back in the hand, um, obviously we actually should have stopped you and rewinded you. That's actually our bad. Um, but I'm kind of curious, did you have any thoughts of pitching subtlety just blank? Oh, uh, pitching it blank? Um, yeah, I, I I, kind of, yeah, just I think I just screwed that up. Okay. Because, um, uh, yeah, he put it into the graveyard, so I was kind of like, okay, that's gone. And then once you put it back in his hand, I kind of stopped registering that. Yeah. I was just kind of looking at the hand and being like, I can't do a whole lot with Emrakul here. Like, sure. I think I ended up Emrakuling him like three or four times. Yeah, you bounced, you bounced it 
twice at least. Yeah. Once with the Teferi, once with the Autobar. And so it just like, um, yeah, like so just like the Supreme Verdict, I couldn't really cast because I didn't want to kill my own Emrakul. Sure. So um, I guess maybe I'm like supposed to bounce off the bounce off the um, uh, Emrakul and then Wrath, but then I'm wrathing my Omnath. So. Sure. I one one question that I have for you is actually about your deck choice. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously. Uh, you know, my co-host of mine, Mason Clark, on Concerned Criticism, popularized a very specific version of four color. Uh -huh. What brings you towards more of the elemental side? And yours is even elementals with traverse. So. Yeah. So um, I just read a Jerry Thompson article um, where he won with this deck, and it just looked really solid. It felt like it really um, solidified some of the problems with the deck. I feel like I feel like um, Eternal Witness plus Ephemera is still good. I just prefer to be on this version. I do think you are more weak to Graveyard Hate, but I haven't really had any opponents bring that in against me. Okay. Um, so I think that would be one consideration. I do think Risen Reef is better than Counterspell, though, in this deck. That's awesome. Uh, what, is, what is it like having these type of events that you can continue to get practice in after you already are qualified? You know, in other countries, people are a lot of stack invites. Here in the U.S., you're invited. You're now uh -huh. basically no longer going to play Magic for three yeah. months. So um, Yeah, it is unfortunate that uh, you can't uh, play again. But um, these invites, I mean, these um, uh, 1Ks are cool because they're maybe for people that don't want the invite, that don't really care about that invite, and just want to play. Um, and then people that have already qualified. I know that we also have uh, Vivian here. Yeah, qualified. Crystal won the other RCQ yeah, so here, so we have lots of winners here. So, well, good luck in the rest of the rounds. Hope to see you in top eight, and okay. uh, thanks for the awesome match. Oh, yeah. Thank you.